Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to episode 2 of Narcissus. So, um, originally I, I was gonna um, like leave a day between these two um, and then do something else, but then I was recording um, something else and then I realized my microphone was just turned up really high so um, so I was messing up messing with the um, settings yesterday for my webcam and everything so stuff just went weird and my microphone was oversensitive and whatever so um last episode uh, trying to remember uh, last episode we were introduced to the protagonist and we were introduced to uh, to sets me which and the two basically met in the palliative care floor, the seventh floor of the hospital. So we, but we know that both of them have some sort of terminal illness. They've they've been placed in this area that's apparently uh, supposed to be waiting for medical treatments, but obviously it's just a, a fancy name for a palliative care ward. So um, and we know that the protagonist has some form of non-small cell lung cancer because of the hints that they get, gave us. So we're just going to go straight back into this. So let's, let's go. Oh, the, I need to change the configuration again because every time this starts up, it goes a bit weird. Keep the effect on. Okay. Across the hall, Facing the nurses' station was a lounge-like place. Left of that unpopulated place were a number of sofas, folding chairs, and a large television. On that 28-inch CRT, a meaningless New Year's program was running. Okay, the, the TV is pretty symbolic, I think, because if you remember the last episode, I'm not even sure talking correctly. Um, anyway, if you remember last episode, he was, um, the, pre the protagonist was saying um, things about how he can only observe himself and everything else as if through a television. So this is like a literal representation of his, his feelings, his world. So this 28 inch cathode ray uh, tube television. It's like ancient, it's one of those huge um, boxy televisions that you'd have like 10 years ago in about 2005-ish, maybe maybe earlier. So yeah. Watching that boring television with an equally bored expression was some girl. Oh, they haven't met yet. This is when they're just about to meet. She had a small build and wore pink pajamas. Her wrist had, just like I did, a white bracelet. Okay, so She's terminally, terminally ill too, she's, um, I'm not sure what disease she has, but it's pretty obvious that she's terminally, terminally ill. Hair that was to her hips left an impression. Hey, you, is that interesting? There wasn't with any particularly, uh, particular deep meaning. Since there was no one around, I tried speaking to her profile. Bitsini. That was all that she replied with. She didn't even turn towards me, even though I had spoken to her. Perhaps she had absolutely no interest in me. She continued to gaze at the television with a bored look. If it's, if it's boring, don't have to watch it. As I thought that, I also sat down in a folding chair. Well, if you find it boring, then you, you don't need to watch it either, you know. Unless you're, unless you're deliberately, unless you're deliberately trying to get close to her. I can't talk today, oh my god. And sitting next to her, I gazed at the television. There was nothing else to do. Nothing else I could do. Quietly, we continued to gaze at the television. On the screen were the usual New Year's programs, pathetic impersonations and parlor tricks. Occasionally ringing out, the host's stupidly high-pitched laugh in the pure white sunlit room, it dryly, rever it dryly reverberated. And yeah. I seriously can't talk. Anata. I seriously can't talk today, oh my god. Suddenly, the girl spoke to me while still gazing at the television. Anata. Nankaime. Which time? What does that mean? Koko ni. Nankaime kita no. 
sorry, I I don't understand the meaning of the question. So, it seemed that at my inability to understand what she was saying, she had up and gotten satisfied with that judgment. Duty. While nodding, she added that there is a rule for someone to teach people who first come here to the seventh floor. Even now, I understood nothing. And as if ignoring me, the girl slowly began speaking. The girl's words came by ones and twos. They were slightly different compared to the doctor's speech that I had heard up until coming here. In that business-like speech from the doctor, it was said that this was a place to await the advancement of medicine. Okay, I may have skipped ahead a little bit in the while I was um, discussing the intro, so this is a place that... Yeah, so this is basically a palliative care ward that's disguised to not be a palliative care ward uh, when they were talking about it to the people who are actually, who are actually um, involved, that's it. It was also called a place for healing the heart. Most likely, broadly speaking, that was probably correct. Yeah, you know, just just broadly speaking. However, from what the girl said, that was a, that was a facade. This seventh floor was within the hospital. It was the only place that didn't give treatment. So they were obviously waiting for the advancement of medicine. So it's where like current treatments don't work anymore. So the Iressa therapy that the protagonist had, I don't think it worked. Uh, that well. Simply a place to wait for the end of life. Yeah, so he uh, he knows this. That's what the girl said. Oh, she knows this. Whoops. That's why. What? That's what I also felt. That's what I also felt. Can't talk today, and had the same perception. Second time. What's that? And the girl told me, this place called the seventh floor, to be here from the moment of admission all the way until dying, first of all, apparently didn't happen. Even if being cured was impossible, if your health becomes better, improves, then they would allow you to come to go home once. Uh, I'm confused by the grammar, but okay. They would, allow, they would allow you to go home once, okay. but after a while and it turns bad, and once again you come back. So if you get better, if you show signs of improvement, they, they let you go home, and and then if you get worse, they, um, they take you back. So that's already happened to her. She's had this disease, she got better once, and then she worsened, so this is her second time. Among these comings and goings, eventually you die. The place where life ran out, and only differed between home and the seventh floor. Without fail, one would one would die in either of those. It seemed no one has ever escaped that. Okay, so this is your fate. This is apparently the fate of everyone who comes here. They they end up choosing either home or the seventh floor to die. That's that's basically it. It was with that meaning that the girl had meant by saying it was her second time. So yeah, she's gotten better once and she went home and she got worse. And um, yeah, so this is her second time. Her voice does sound like really dead, really bored, really monotonous. So it's like she, she's just there, like emotionless. Still looking at the dull screen, the girl continues. The girl continues speaking even more. The subject being not about what time the lights would be out and the normal sorts of topics um, exchanged between admitted patients. She taught me about totally different things. On the third time, you're given a temporary discharge. Prepare yourself. There's never a fourth. You won't be going home anymore. 
If there's a time that you want to run away, go not to station A, but towards station B. Don't eat anything, that's the shortest path. It'll end with the least burden to your family. It's only full of these sorts of topics that gives one pause. Most likely, there's something only full of people who came here. Through just those who participated, who participated in moving towards death. These are the feelings that have continued to be passed down. Okay, so it's, it, it's sort of like a tradition. Was the duty you mentioned earlier this? So yo, it's Kanatamo. Um, this is pretty foreshadowing because I think like if Setsumi is telling us to tell it to newcomers, um it's sort of saying that she knows that she's not gonna um see anyone else in this place. So um so yeah. So she knows she's probably gonna die before the next person comes or or something, so she knows she doesn't have that much time left. And obviously um, she's already been sent home and come, and um, came back once, so one more and then she's sort of, yeah, that's it. With those final words, the girl slowly stood up, gently, her long hair swayed and brushed the tip of my nose. Yeah. And then, just like that, with her back facing me, she began walking towards the hall. I was, left I was left alone in that place, with the laughing voice from the screen and the white flowers decorating around the window. In the end, the girl never once looked in my direction. Okay. January 10th. From then, when a few days have passed, Finally, the New Year's programs ended, and soon the third terms of middle and high school would be starting. So, in Japan, um, there are three terms, and the first term begins in April, so you have April until I think July or something, and then you have August to December, and then um, January to April will be the last term. Today in the lounge, once more, the figures the figures of the girl and I were staring at the television. It's boring, isn't it? So, ne. The word came back in reply, but both of us are conversing while continuing to gaze at the screen. Hey, is this place always like this? Ah, I, I meant how there's um, no one around. I think I think we can guess what happened to um to everyone else. Nurses, doctors, and after that helpers. If you take them out, then aside from our own caregivers, I had never seen anyone else. I guess it's because it's the New Year's. It's that tone of voice. Oh my god. She she obviously knows what happened to the to the others. I think, and it's it's not hard to work out what happened to the others. Just oh my god, the, prota the protagonist asking something like that. Uh, no, it's not like I meant that. Yeah, you are not. An exchange that wasn't even a conversation. We indifferently exchanged back and forth. A slight breeze came from the windows that couldn't open more than fifteen centimeters. Occasionally, it would, say, it would sway the girl's hair, and in the same way, would sway the white flowers decorating around the windows. The two of us, while watching the boring television, were only spending days passing time. Oh, the two of you were in a place like this? Saying that while rushing up was an elderly nurse. Why isn't she voiced? My voice is gonna die. From just glancing at the nurse's station once in a while, this person seemed to be the chief of the seventh floor. So, Setsumi san, you don't have a fever? Setsumi. 
Apparently you just was for girl's name. You can't be roaming around outside without permission anymore, okay? Alright? Everyone gets worried. It's me. Why? What kind of statement is that? <sighs> really, girls these days, there's just, just, just no helping them. And for a while more, the nurse continued scolding. To that, she, the girl called Sensumi, let it go by with an indifferent expression. As if ignoring As if ignoring the somewhat noisy nurse, she continued watching the boring screen. I can't talk today, uh Well, later I'll be coming to take a blood sample, alright? With those final words, once again the nurse returned back to the nurse's station. I mean temperatures and blood samples, right? It's the only two things that sort of that sort of happens. And I'm just wondering, do they even help? I mean, obviously they would help to some extent, but to someone who's terminally ill, would temperatures and blood samples even help? Just, just, just wondering. Hey, you. I mean, I can't call you sets me, right? Wrapped around the girl's wrist was the white vinyl bracelet. While looking at the blood type and name there, I asked. <laughs> Is something wrong, Sensumi? What? Hey, 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 why is it that I'm the younger one? It wasn't that I was upset at the word younger. It's, it's just no matter how you looked at it, one would, believe I, I, one would believe I was five, six years older. That was why I took out that license that was in my chest pocket and showed it to her. How about it? How about it? Even though I look like this, I'm 20, you know. <sighs> okay, so we find out his age. He was diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer at 20. So, yeah, so this is the, pro this is the protagonist. Yeah, <sighs> With just a glance at the license, the girl gave only that reply. Hey, I, I don't really get it. Oh, okay. As always, the girl spoke softly with no, with no expression. Those eyes, while looking at the boring television, I felt that they were also looking at some place far away. Okay. When the morning temperature taking ended, I got onto the I got onto the elevator, trying not to be seen by the nurses. Where are you going? Coming to the first floor, deliberately deliberately passing through the entrance for outpatients. And I just kept walking out of the hospital. Where are you going? Why are you trying to You're trying to run away? Mm -hmm. The destination was the place I was taught before. Not the nearby station A, but the far station B. Wait, is this set to me? Did it just suddenly um, swap between... Yeah, so this is set to me, I think. It wasn't like I was planning on running away. The seventh floor, or home. There was no one who died outside of those two. Before, that was what I heard. It also seemed that the girl called Setsumi had also gone many times to, to gone many times to Station B. So, wait, no, this is a, this is the protagonist. So, what the heck are you doing? Are you trying to are you trying to like run away? Are you trying to find somewhere else? That was why, for no real reason, I simply felt like wanting to go to see that place once. It's not like there are guards around. Even so, us residents of the 7th floor were different from other admitted patients. While, while also thinking about the but maybe, I continued walking on the street to the early morning station area. Glancing at hurrying commuters and people going to school, I slowly moved on at a measured pace. After walking a while, taking about 25 minutes, I finally arrived before the station. 
In terms of bus stops, it was about four distance. Okay, so four bus stops. 25 minutes for four bus stops. How fast do you walk? I mean, like, over here, um, one bus stop is like really, really long. It will take about, I don't know, it'll take, me, it'll take about at least 40 minutes to walk on four bus stops. But, okay, okay. In a way, there's quite a bit of people around. That was the first impression of on seeing Station B. Because my clothes were pajamas, I stood out somewhat. H however, if just like this, I bought a train ticket, I felt could without a single problem go anywhere. Anyway, okay, so this is one of the downsides. Sometimes the sometimes the uh, the grammar would be a bit weird. So I felt I could without a single problem go. Anyway, okay. Anyway. I was at not Station A, but this Station B that was recommended, I didn't know. However, if one were planning to run away, I thought it was a simple thing. Certainly, the girl was also supposed to have come many times. But why was it that she still remained in the seventh floor, even now, I wonder? Maybe she didn't. Maybe she, maybe she wanted to run away. Early morning, before the station. While watching the people hurrying by, Suddenly that thought occurred to me. That night, after the lights had been turned off, holding onto a book of manga, unable to sleep, I wandered around the ward alone. Normally, wandering around after lights out would get one scolded badly, but us residents of the seventh floor were given a relative amount of freedom. Three guesses as to why. No prizes. And with the lights off, the usual lounge was pitch dark. Then I saw her figure. Hey, today you're going outside? Uh. In the dark room, there was a response, but that face remained looking beyond the window. Immediately, I started talking about what happened during the day. Okay, so he went to the station and he came back. That reminds me, this morning I went all the way to the station. Just like you told me, I went to, I went to see Station B. So. But the girl's res response was no different from the usual. Because she was supposed to have gone before, I had thought that there might have been some kind of reaction. But thinking about that, as well as how she had, re she still remained calm, uh, remained here. Did it, did it mean that she really had no intention of running away? Why is there a apostrophe there? That Okay, that, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be to, uh, that's supposed to be there. That's not supposed to be there. Okay. Suddenly, the girl opened her mouth. Words as if she had seen clear. Words as if she had seen clear through to my heart just now. Oh, the next time she goes home would be her last time. Because I think the hospital sort of like monitoring her condition through these blood tests and temperature. So like, when they find that she's gonna deteriorate soon, um, they give her another home visit. So I think that's how she knows that third time is gonna be the last time. And she, she obviously doesn't want to... I don't think she wants to go through with this. Mm. Ah, that, that's right. Okay, Most likely, when she said that she was, um, she would be able to go home, she was talking about her temporary discharge. In this place called the seventh floor, being admitted more than three times apparently never happened. Especially, unlike the elderly, when considering the rate of progression of disease, it was even more so for younger patients, like us. With that kind of meaning came the words, we won't meet again. Choose what? Well, um, if I was a bit more evil, I think I would cut the episode here and leave that as an open question. So, 
Thanks very much for watching. If you have any feedback or suggestions, please leave, please, uh, leave a comment. And which one would you choose if you had the choice? Would you go for dying in the hospice or would you go for dying at home? Or would you just go for something else entirely? Um, what would you choose? Let me know. Uh, anyway, for now, I'll see you in the next episode. So, yeah. Uh, bye.